Hi friends, this is Father Juan. Um, I will be your new pastor coming June 18th. Uh, I've been a priest for 12 years. Uh, been ordained in 2012 by Rachel Stecky. I uh, have experience in working in the Dominican Republic for seven years and then for the last five years I've been working here in the city of Racine. So, coming June 18th, I will be the new pastor of this new um, grouping of parishes that we have uh, brought together. So, a few months ago, at the early of this year, at the beginning of this year, you received a letter from the Archdiocese, or actually from all of us, the priests, here in the city of Racine. And a letter that was explaining the changes that are coming to our city uh, in this summer. So what I'm going to try to do today, and I hope I explain myself well, is to try to communicate what was in the letter and what we have been doing in the last few months and, and, and in planning. So that's who I am. I'm Father Juan. been ordained a priest for 12 years, a member of the community of St. Paul, and I've been working here in the city of Racine for the last uh, almost five years. And the current, current pastor of uh, Sacred Hearts, St. Richard, St. Patrick's, and St. Edwards. So, why I'm doing this video? Many of you probably are anxious about what's going on. So, you received the letters, some of the people, especially the leadership of the parishes, the pastoral council uh, members, the finance council members, the trustees, they know and have a lot of information about the planning, but maybe you. Um, who are faithful and come every time to Mass probably don't have much information about this, or maybe uh, the letter wasn't clear enough for you. So I'm hoping to clarify all the different societies and, and things that we may be uh, having in our hearts as, as we journey together in this process of uh, planning and structuring the church in Racine. So, uh, what I'm going to try to do is kind of um, this video will be uh, set in different uh, stages. So this is the part of the introduction, what I'm telling you, what I'm going to do. The next thing is the background. And there I probably will be heavy in numbers and, and, and things that, that we took into consideration for this restructuring. So we'll discuss that. Uh, I'll try to provide numbers for you. Then. Um, the third part of the video will be the proposal. What are we are proposing to you uh, for the church in Racine? And finally, the vision that we have for the future. And this is a bit, remember, the vision is something that we are working on it and planning and, and thinking about. So that's not set in stone yet. It's, it's a, a, a work in progress. So the background of the whole planning process. Let's start with the history. As you know, right now in the city of Racine, we have the Siena school system, the Siena Catholic school system that we put together a while back in the city of Racine. All the parishes agree that it would be best to create a system for the schools so that we could provide the services of Catholic education to the whole city, to the whole community. And we did that. And that's part of this planning process. We also probably remember, and some of you remember, the 2020 plan. That was a plan in which we were discussing that different parishes will collaborate. And that's why we have already these collaborations, especially in our grouping of parishes. St. Lucis is collaborating with um, uh, uh, St. Sebastian's. Uh, St. John and St. Joseph were collaborating with uh, both of them, were collaborating. And then in here, St. Edwards and Richards and Patrick's and Sacred Heart, we are collaborating. So that's how we kind of, uh, uh, the 2020 plan was uh, looking at the possibility of collaborating with parishes. But one of the reality that we came about is that even though these collaborations were in place, we still think about uh, parish. And if you look around, in, around your pews, and, and you all know this, and if we are very honest, we sometimes sit in masses where churches not even half empty. Uh, we sit in masses that really the attendance of masses is small. The pandemic also kind of hurt us. And uh, the only privilege in the city of Racine that is now back to 100% mass attendance um, that before COVID 
is St. Patrick's with the Hispanic community. There's the only parish that it seems that we are back to the numbers that we were before the pandemic. The other parishes around the city, we have lost people that come to Mass. And that's something that concerns us, and that's something that leads us to think what we can do to make our church interesting more vibrant, uh, more alive, and, and be able to really dedicate our energies and, and our passion and, and our uh, hard work towards evangelization, towards getting people closer to Christ. And so that's kind of what is in the background in the history of the planet. So at this point, two years ago, we started to think about what needed to happen. If you remember, I was the pastor of St. Patrick's, St. Edwards and St. Richard's, but then Father Ricardo was asked to go to Milwaukee, to San Adalbert, and that opened the situation for Sacred Heart. And the Archdiocese asked me to take care of Sacred Heart. Of course, have three parishes, now four parishes, and we, we, we were growing. And we kind of discerned that that was a challenge, a challenge that uh, at the whole level of the Archdiocese, we are finding it. We have less priests, and lots of parishes. So I'm going to give you kind of a number that, that is out there for us. So we have in the exercises, we have 189 parishes and we have around 101 pastors to run those parishes, which means, as you can see, the numbers there are really uh, that most pastors have more than one parish. But if you look at this number, the 101 priests, we have 70 priests who are uh, ordained for the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, who are from the Arch. So these are the number of priests that really are visually sticky, has um, the power to tell them where to go and be pastors. The, the other 30, or more or less, they are from religious congregations, different congregations that are working and helping and supporting us here in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, and that's wonderful. But as you may know, also, the shortage of vocations may be affecting those um, um, uh, congregations, and they may need to move their priests around. So, really, we have uh, uh, these 30 priests, we have them, they are supporting us, and they are helping us, but we don't really know how long they will be with us because their congregations as we see around they also need to do their own planning and out of these 70 priests that we have here from the Archdiocese, 14 are 68 or older which means that they are ready to retire they could retire tomorrow and if they retire tomorrow there will 14 less pastors to take care of parishes. So that's kind of one of the challenges that we already have there. And then another challenge is we have about 25 um, international priests who are ordained for the Archdiocese of Milwaukee and working here in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee like myself. But we have some immigration issues with them. Uh, they are not permanent residents, they are on a religious working visa, which means that they may have to leave the country for a year, they may have to go out and, and different things. So that gives us really a very difficult and challenging thing that even uh, to appoint pastors of those priests uh, is, is a challenge. So all this background of numbers regarding priests lead us to think more strategically about the pastors and the priests minister in, ministering to different parishes. So now, we, we have seen that, that the situation with our priests is pretty uh, precarious and we need to be mindful of that because we want to have holy priests who could serve in their communities and, and not stretch out pretty thin that, that could not really be uh, effective in the ministry. So we, we, the idea of us planning it is to actually provide the opportunity for priests to thrive in their ministry. So now, that's the background on the priest side, but let us look at the um, people on the pew side here in our in our uh, city of Racine. I'm going to give you a number. So we, we have 
within the deanery of Racine, which is east of the interstate um, and, and the county, this area of the county, we have 12 parishes. So 12 parishes, so those are St. Mary's by the Lake, St. Louis, Caledonia, St. Paul, St. Rita, St. John, St. Joseph, um, St. Patrick's, uh, St. Richard, St. Edwards, Sacred Heart, and then St. Lucy's and St. Sebastian's. Those are the 12 parishes of the city of Racine. So in any given Sunday in the city of Racine, we have 32 masses, 32 masses on Sunday. And we have about 3,900 people who come to Mass on the weekend out of 17,000 Catholics that we have in the city. So, as you can see, numbers are low. But if you divide that, it will give us an average of around 120 plus, 23 or 24, somewhere there. Uh, but an average of a mass. And for some of you who are in mass and you sit and you look around, you also know that you didn't have 123 people in your mass. And so we see that we have all these amount of masses and, and this small number of people participating in the mass. We are probably in the city of Racine overbuilt for the number of Catholics that we have in, in, in our city and for the number of people that are coming to Mass. Our capacity is probably 10 times more than the people that we have in the pews. So that's one reality that, that we really need to take into consideration and see. And that's um, what leads us to think how can we really collaborate? How can we really plan for the best of the church in the city of Racine. So what we did was looking at the numbers of priests, looking into the history of how we had planned here for the city, looking also at the numbers of people on the pews and the different masses, we started seriously a conversation between all the pastors here in the city and say, what are we going to do for our church in the city of Racine that could be really thriving, that could be really a, a church that is vibrant, a church that really could make people uh, feel that they are belonging to something that is powerful and great. And so we took a step back and thought from scratch and thought about what is the question maybe for us in the background was, what is the church that we want to see 20 years from now? Not the church that we have now, or that could have been, the church of the past, no. What is the church that we want to see 20 years from now? How does uh, parishes and that church, in, that church in Racine looks like? And there's when we started to talk about different areas and different things that we could do. And so that's kind of the background that led us to discuss and make a proposal for you, that led us to write this letter to all of you. So we have revised what is the background, no? the historical one, the priest background, the numbers of charters of priests that we have, and then also the shortage of people that we have in the pews. That's what led us to come to this moment of planning and making a proposal. And for this, we took a lot of meetings and a lot of into consideration to think what would be the best proposal. Remember, the idea is the church that we want to see 20 years from now. And that's what I invite you to be dreamers with me. Like dream about that wonderful church that we want to have for us here in Rosina. A church that could really be vibrant, could dedicate uh, herself to evangelization. A church that could really be the, the, the level in the middle of society here in Rosina. The church that could be the ferment for this city and become really vibrant. So that's that's what we have in mind. So we took into the consideration all the different relationships that were there. And, and some people have asked and said, well, Father, why four 
parishes in one group and eight parishes in the other group. Here is the thing. We look into different areas or different parishes that were collaborating already and were having uh, this, this um, collaboration uh, uh, working relationship that was good. And so we said one of the principles for this planning is not to break any of the things that are already working. The only thing that happened here, and it was um, and with St. Mary's by the Lake, was one of the parishes that were working with St. Matthew's in the north. But that was kind of a, a situation in which you find a parish who, which is geographically in the deanery of Racine, but then working with a parish that is in and the neighboring deanery. We say, well, no, let's, let's plan and keep all this together in one deanery. So when we look at those situations, so we decided also the other step was geographically. So how we're gonna gonna look at this? We we if if, if you knew, and probably you don't know this, or maybe you know this because you are from Racine and you have been here longer than I am. But we have seven parishes that are within two miles of each other, and that also helps us to think like how can we group those parishes that are close to each other so that we could use better our resources. So the proposal that came was to create two territories and, and we still need to work in, in the names and all that, but at least two territories. One that will be formed by four parishes, which is St. Paul and St. Louis, and then uh, St. Rita's and St. Mary's by the Lake. Those four parishes will be collaborating and working together in this new grouping and rearrangement of the church in Racine. And then the other eight will be together. And so that's St. John, St. Joseph, Sacred Hearts, St. Patrick's, St. Richard's, St. Edward, St. Lucy's, and St. Sebastian's. All out of all those eight parishes, only the, 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 the one that is a bit far, that you could say, why, why you put it in there, is St. Sebastian's, because it's, it's the farthest away to the west. But the other seven are really close one by one. What we said, well, St. Sebastian's and St. Lucy's have been working for more than, uh, I think it's more than 10 years that are already a relationship of working. So we will say, let's now bring them together. And so we have those two groupings, four and eight, okay? And that's, that's the proportion of territories. So we, we are kind of talking about the, the, the southeast <laughs> Racine and then the north is the northwest Racine, but really it's just those eight and four parishes that are um, called and invited to work together, each one of them under one pastor. So we have discussed the background, we have discussed the proposal. Now, the vision for the future. And here is where I'll ask you, first of all, to pray to the Holy Spirit to inspire us and to give us the wisdom and the understanding that we need to create something beautiful out of this collaboration, out of this consolidation. We, we are coming together as a group of parishes to really discuss and, and, and learn ways to work together, but more than that, to become a one community that really lives the gospel of Christ by evangelizing and reaching out to, to other people so to make us really a vibrant church. So, beginning June 18th, um, the four parishes in the north would have as a pastor, Father Thomas, the current pastor in St. Lucie's, and his associate pastor will be Father um, Marco Valentini, the two of them will be taking care of those four parishes. For us, in the south, I will be the pastor, and then Father Jose Mario, who has been working with me for a few years in these four parishes that uh, we are currently working, will be my other associate, then uh, Father Michael Peterson, who is the current pastor of St. Rita's, will be my associate pastor too, and then Father Craig Richter, He's going to be ordained next Saturday. Please pray for him. He's going to be ordained May 18th. So pray for him. And he, he's coming to us too. He's full of energy and passion. And as a newly priest, we want to give him the best experience 
in ministry so that he could really grow as a priest. So those will be the team of priests that will be working with you. But of course, when we look to masses, you could see already that we are only four priests and we have now, just discussing for our eight parishes, we have 21 masses on the weekend. That's why I've been celebrating masses every weekend. I celebrate four masses and Jose Mario has been celebrating four masses on, on the weekend. So that's uh, uh, a lot. Father Nate Riesman, who is the vicar for uh, clergy, in the presentation when he discussed about this, um, canonically we priests are allowed to celebrate three masses on the weekend. So maybe it just, uh, <laughs> I just am an overachiever and I want to celebrate more masses anyway. But so, those are the four priests that will be our team. Of course, we still rely on uh, some help out because reality is that we, we have a schedule of masses that does not allow us to be at the same time <laughs> in, in different places. Um, and that's something that we will discuss and we will talk. But so we have four priests coming to working together. Um, the vision is that these eight parishes, eight communities that are coming together <clears throat> to start working in a consolidation plan that will lead us to become a one strong unit of faithful in the city of Racine. That and that's the process that we're beginning. So June 18th, we, we have been already working with a planning team from your parishes. There are four people from each of your parishes who are looking at the different areas of the parish life so that we could really see the best way to consolidate. We have people who are looking into our um, faith formation programs and what do we have in the eight parishes. There are people who are looking about our liturgy and ministries, the different ministries that we have. We have people who are looking into the different pastoral councils and different um, um, commissions that we have within these pastoral councils, um, the staffs that we have. Um, and we also are having people who are looking into the finances of each of the parishes and buildings that we have. And, and so they are looking into that, planning and thinking what we could do uh, what steps can we take to consolidate and become a stronger unit of faithful in the city of Racine? That's one thing. Um, of course, you may be very anxious right now <clears throat> and thinking what's going to happen in July, or I mean June 18th, when Father Juan becomes the pastor of all these parishes. To calm your anxieties, not really very much. <laughs> so we will... Um, June 18th, and, and, and that's the first weekend, June the 22nd and 23rd, we'll, we'll, we'll continue with the same schedule of masses that we have for now. Because I want you to be part of this conversation, I want you to, to get us to know and see how we're going to do. Now, the one major change that's going to happen to us in our community is going to be in the first weekend of Advent. As you can see, now, if we look at numbers for the masses that we have in the eight parishes, actually our average is about 135 people per mass. We have 21 masses. And in any given weekend, we have 2,800 people coming to mass. But we have 21 masses on the weekend. We also have 17 masses during the week. Just, just, just imagine that. So we have 38 masses from Monday through Sunday. That's something that we really need to discuss and look into how can we be more um, mindful of the resources that we have. We have masses that have 50 people. We have masses that have um, really uh, small numbers in the pews. But we also have um, churches that are very close one to another. So this is something that we need to pray about it, that we need to think about. But for the first weekend of Advent, 2024, December 1st and 2nd, that's when we are planning to bring about a new schedule of Masses that will allow us to be all um, celebrating together and, and, and probably 
really experiencing the vibrancy to be sitting in the pews with a big group of people. The people uh, who are from the four parishes that I already have, they have wonderful experiences about collaboration and coming together to masses and see how the vibrancy that happens when we all come together and pray. One mass that we did and it was amazing for Holy Thursday. We have a choir of 35 people. That was a beautiful choir, beautiful mass, and, and everybody felt that that was to be a church. So again, I'll invite you to pray. Pray for this process. I invite you also to open your minds and dream about a church that will be here for the next 20 years or more, and a church that is vibrant, church that really dedicate a lot of energy to evangelization, a church that through the CNN school systems really share the gifts and the, and the virtues and, and the teachings of the Catholic Church to the community, a church that through our uh, ministries of uh, human concerns and, and ministries of service to the community, we could really bring about the kingdom of God to the city of Racine. Uh, I'll invite you to pray for that and we'll be, of course, giving you more updates. But I just wanted to explain to you what the letter that you receive is kind of uh, trying to say and communicate and hope you, f by watching this video, you kind of gain a deeper understanding of what we are doing and why we are doing that and who is doing this. That's, that's important. So if you have any doubt, if you have any questions, you could always reach out to me by email. I have my emails is available in the web page. We also have in all the web pages of the parishes a, a tab that you could look into updates about our planning process. And so I hope this has been helpful and I hope uh, um, you really keep praying for this process and praying for the church and be open mind to the restructuring because I believe from my heart that if we do this well, and if we do it thinking about the church and thinking about the greater good of our community, we could become a very strong community of Catholics who are really at the level of the kingdom of God in the city of Racine and could transform and change our reality and could be vibrant and, and could be really a vital uh, component of this society.